It's Friday, January 13th. Let's talk PlayStation. Hey, we got some news to talk about. So our first real kind of Let's Talk PlayStation of 2017 where there's actual news stories to discuss. So let's get right into it. Uh, first up, a Glacier White PlayStation 4 uh, Slim is going to be available relatively soon. So January 24th in Europe, January 19th in Hong Kong, and February 23rd in Japan. There is no news of the system coming to North America, but PS4 Slim will now be available in Gra Glacier White relatively soon. I will say that if you're at all interested in getting this, you should probably get it now. Um, don't wait for price drops or anything like that. If you haven't noticed, when Sony does a new colorway of a home console, it doesn't usually stay in stock very long. Once it's gone, it's kind of gone. Um, you know, I mean, sometimes they'll keep uh, multiple color variations for their handhelds, but traditionally, if they run out of a, uh, you know, if they run a color for a console. It's only for a limited time, and then it uh, won't come back for a while until they do another, you know, limited run of it or whatever. So if you're going to get this thing, um, get it now. So here's a little Uncharted movie update for you. It seems like it actually is going forward. We were just, you know, it's it's weird. We always have these news stories where it's like, it's going forward, now it's going backwards. Going forward, now it's going backwards. Well, here's another forward story. So the um, a writer for the... Um, for the movie Joe Carnahan posted on Instagram recently that the script is done. He said it's a beast. Uh, apparently he's very uh, proud of it. And of course, why wouldn't he be? Because he kind of like worked on it. Um, and it seems like it's going, uh, like I said, it's, this is a new like step forward. So <laughs> hopefully, um, I mean, the, the director is saying that they're, they're hoping to have, you know, the, the film finished and everything in 2017. So uh, we'll see if that holds true. All right, here's something more exciting, which is the next PlayStation 4 firmware update. We now have some new information on that. And well, the new information is that it's starting relatively soon, or the beta at least. So as Sony has been doing for the past few firmwares on PlayStation 4, uh, at least big major firmware updates, um, they're starting beta signups. So if you're in North America or Europe, uh, you can go to the adjacent website and you know sign up to hopefully beta test it come February. So February is when they're going to be um, doing the open beta. And you can try out some new tasty PS4 firmware features for 4.50. And I think, obviously, the one thing a lot of people are waiting for at this point is external hard drive support. A lot of people are really, like, clamoring for that. I am I would assume that's definitely, like, finally going to come. The one thing I've always been asking for, and it seems like I'm definitely in the minority here, because, like, nobody's really asking for this, especially in 2017, because streaming is such a big thing now. But I still want to locally save files to the hard drive. That's the one thing. I loved about PlayStation 3 is that I had all my files on it and I could actually do file management on it almost like it was a computer. I had so many music, so much music and video saved on it. I don't want to have to keep a USB drive plugged into the system to access files. So let me save content to the hard drive. Um, I'm hoping that's in there, but though I'm, I'm pretty doubtful. There's still a number, number of other things that they can improve upon, so we won't have to wait too long to see what's in the next firmware. In an unsurprising turn of events, uh, Sony Interactive Worldwide Studios president Shuhei Oshida discussed this past week about how they still have how Sony still has uh, many unannounced titles in production, and that you should be excited. This isn't surprising, and I almost wasn't even going to talk about this because. Yeah, no duh. I mean, Sony has a crap load of developers still, which we will get to in a, in a second here. But um, they still have tons of developers. They still have all these developers working on games. Now, granted, we know what a lot of their developers are doing now, so it's we kind of have a good timeline of everything. You know, we do we have a good subset of games that we can look forward to whenever they decide to come out. But you know, obviously Shuhei is still trying to reassure people and letting people know, hey, we still have surprises, and that's kind of expected. So this one's interesting, uh, purely because we never talk about Kaz Harai anymore, because now he's the CEO of Sony Corporation as a whole and no longer, you know, directly involved with PlayStation. But he had something to say about PlayStation recently, so that's why it's exciting. Um, at CES recently, 2017, Kaz Harai was just uh, talking about PlayStation VR, and he was kind of reiterating what we had already heard a few months back, which is that PlayStation VR is going to be improved upon. Um, he more or less said, you know, it's it's definitely a first generation device, and you know, improvements need to be need to be uh, made upon it to make it even better than it already is. And PlayStation is constantly improving their hardware and things like that. So, yeah, uh, as we've kind of already expected, and. Like we mentioned months ago, that's that's a good thing. Um, Sony always talks about how PlayStation VR feels like releasing the original PlayStation. This is going to be a, a platform in itself, and it's going to um, have some strong staying power with Sony. I think they really believe in the, in, um, in the hardware, and, and certainly I'm very interested to see what a Gen 2 device of it would be like, not only in terms of like a hardware improvement of like for the games, you know, but um, even uh, cosmetically too, you know. I mean, that's, I think... Actually, that's the one thing people really didn't see coming with PlayStation VR. And even if they 
you know, are the type of consumer that does have, you know, an Oculus or an HTC Vive, um, it's maybe not much of a hassle for them, but with, you know, console gaming, which is always the, 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 the allure there is that it's always simple and easy to use and it's plug and play. And then you've got a situation where PlayStation VR comes in and yeah, it's VR for the console. It's easy to jump into, but at the same time, it's still a bit of a hassle just with all the cords everywhere and, um, you know, getting a situated and comfortable and strapping the whole big headset on. I know it sounds, it probably sounds nuts to somebody that doesn't own PlayStation VR right now, but it really is like that much of a hassle. You really have to be in the mood for it and you really have to, um, you know, have that time too. You know, if I find myself in a situation where I only have an hour to play a game, um, it's like, it's pr there's pretty much zero chance of that being a PlayStation VR game. Because again, you, you really do have to kind of get it situated for it and bust out all the, the, the cords and everything, make sure your play area is clear and everything. Like it's just, it actually is to the point where it's too much of a hassle. So at the very least, I'm excited for, you know, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4 versions of virtual reality, not even in terms of just PlayStation VR, where it makes it more of a convenient thing to you know, take on, take off, and not make it such of a commitment for your playtime. And now for the big news story this past week for PlayStation, not really a good news story. Uh, Sony is going to be closing Gorilla Cambridge. Uh, they're one of their developers that they've had for a very, very long time, 19 years. Gorilla Cambridge, of course, just recently released uh, Rigs Mechanized Combat for PlayStation VR. Before that, they did Kills on Mercenary on PlayStation Vita. And uh, yeah, like I, like I said, 19 years, you know, uh, they've done, you know, they've worked on Little Big Planet, Medieval, um, Tons of numerous titles. It's it's a shame. It's it always sucks when not even just you know Sony's developers, uh, Sony Studio, but when any sort of studio um, you know faces closure, uh, those are people that lose uh, their jobs and things like that. So Sony had uh, this statement to say. It is regrettable that this decision will lead to compulsory redundancies. Whilst we accept that this decision will mean that we risk losing high caliber staff by focusing on other studios with exciting new projects and development, including continued work on PlayStation VR, we believe we will be in a stronger position going forward and able to offer the best possible content of the highest quality to our players. This decision should not take anything away from the incredible games and services that Gorilla Cambridge has delivered. Within Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios, we have a regular process of review in order to consider projects coming to completion and the, de and the deployment of resources. In such a competitive landscape, this enables us to continue to create and produce high quality, innovative, and commercially viable projects. Having reviewed and assessed all current projects and plans for the short and medium term, we've decided that in order to deliver our, on our strategic uh, objectives, it is necessary to make some changes to the European studio structures. As a result, it has been decided that uh, Gorilla Cambridge Studio will close. Yes, this is certainly disappointing and it, it always sucks when all those people lose their jobs. Now, if we're going to be actually talking about the Sony side of it and Gorilla Cambridge, uh, you know, here's the thing. Uh, now, right away, I would say that Gorilla Cambridge, I guess, I, I guess if you're looking at all the available Sony studios right now, Gorilla Cambridge would have, if, if Sony was in a position where they had to chop off some meat, I guess Gorilla Cambridge definitely was, uh, was on the chopping block. I mean, they're not going to close on Naughty Dog or Sucker Punch. Uh, you know, they're not going to close down studios like that. So Gorilla Cambridge, uh, Gorilla Cambridge, granted they release good games, you know, this, this is not a bad studio by any stretch of the imagination, but if they had to cut one off, I guess Gorilla was definitely, um, Gorilla Cambridge, mind you, not Gorilla Games, um, Gorilla Cambridge was, I guess I hate to say it, but, you know, a good option to, um, get rid of. And I would also say that Sony isn't necessarily in a bad position with PlayStation, as we've often discussed numerous times, whether it's regarding sales or, you know, their, um, their fiscal, you know, earnings or anything like that. PlayStation is doing, you know, fairly well for Sony. Uh, and this is a, a purely a business move, as we always discuss. These decisions are made for a reason. Sony is a multi-billion dollar corporation. They make, they don't take these decisions lightly, and there's usually a very good reason for them. Um, so it kind of goes back to what I was saying. They're, they're in a healthy position. They didn't do this because they, um, well, it's kind of contradictory. They didn't do this because they needed to, but they did this because they feel that this is kind of the, the best thing to do moving forward, um, to sort of reinvest assets and things like that, you know. Um, it's just kind of like, what well, I, I hate to like defend their PR statement, but you gotta, you kind of have to go back to that and just kind of take their word for it. They aren't in a position where they can't pay these people and they can't keep them around and, and stuff like that. They just are looking at, you know, all their resources and their assets and where they want to allocate money. And, um, I guess for Gorilla Cambridge, it just didn't really make a whole lot of sense anymore for them. So, you know, it sucks, but, uh, like I guess, yeah, like they're not going to close Naughty Dog or, or 
Sony Santa Monica or like Studio Japan, like those aren't really going anywhere. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, if anything, I will say it's a little disappointing that um, for how many years now we've been seeing nothing but closures. Uh, for a while, we've always been kind of up in the air about like, is Sony going to acquire a new studio? But that just doesn't really seem to be part of their strategy anymore. As we often discuss, it seems like Sony has taken a lot of new directions in terms of how they approach things with, um, you know, the video game, video game industry. And this, I guess this is just one of those things moving forward. So that was our last PlayStation related news story. Um, as a courtesy to people that watch Let's Talk PlayStation purely for the PlayStation stuff. But as always, we can't not discuss big major video game things that happen in the industry and obviously one big pretty huge monumental thing that happened just last night is the nintendo switch um you know sort of official reveal we actually got to see a lot of things like a lot of details about this including the launch date which is march 3rd um the price which is going to be 300 dollars. so of course i thought i'd give my impressions of the device so if you wanted to only see the playstation stuff you can click away right now and you're all said and done for your playstation news but here are some nintendo switch impressions uh, you may have already, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably already got the gist of what I said on there last night after I finished watching the event. But I will say, um, so for the N Nintendo Switch, and I've been vocal about this before, I think the hardware is actually great. Uh, it's very Nintendo. Uh, you know, here's the thing. I mean, if you didn't notice, it's always Nintendo's DNA. They like to do, they like to approach games in a very different manner, whether it's, you know, the DS or the Wii Remote, um... The Wii U, obviously. I mean, there's they. It's just what Nintendo does. They like to approach games in a different way, and so the Switch is like very much so that. And obviously, during the event last night, they you know sort of announced how pretty much every piece of Nintendo DNA from previous uh, you know consoles that they've done have been all like put into one with um, with the Switch. That's very evident in the Joy-Con, they, which they spent a you know, vast amount of time discussing. Uh, I'm going to assume most of you have seen the event. I mean, the Joy-Con, obviously, there's two, the two little controllers that you know slide in and out of the um, the main screen. They can be used in a number of variety of ways, sideways, got a gyroscope. I mean, this thing can do pretty much... It, here, it has a lot of input methods, which means there's a lot of ways that developers can approach games on the Switch, which is... Um, kind of a good thing and also a bad thing. Good because it's, you know, there's not necessarily anything wrong with options and, you know, giving developers a number of ways to make a creative game, but at the same time, kind of skews development because that's, you know, how are you going to make a game that is so super unique on the Switch and that it can't necessarily be ported to PS4, X1, or PC or anything like that, which means it might be a little bit of a tough decision, decision for a developer to release a game on Switch. More so than it already is because third party has always been a big problem for Nintendo. Uh, but yes, I enjoy the hardware. I think Switch, I believe in Switch as hardware. My problem, and it's gonna be, it's always been Nintendo's problem for the longest time, is just getting people to buy this thing. And obviously, I mean, third-party support, it's like, it's, it's just, third-party support hasn't been Nintendo's bread and butter for like 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's been a long time since third party was kind of a big thing on Nintendo. Nowadays, people play Nintendo for Nintendo's stuff. And that was the best part of the presentation last night was just Nintendo's offerings. Super Mario Odyssey looks awesome. I, I have no doubt that that game is going to be anything short of fantastic. It looks totally interesting. Um, you know, full blown Mario game. And it's and a Mario game unlike anything we've really had in a very long time. Super stoked for that. Zelda, of course, looks fantastic. Splatoon 2, awesome. Then they start getting weird with it. You know, they show things like arms, and it's like, why does that IP even need to exist? There's always that like there's always that one game on like that is it's a new, it's always a new IP. It's always like within you know the console's launch, if not launch day, but within, you know, a few day you know, a few months of their earliest con of the of the console's release. And it's always this weird, quirky game that just does not do very well at all. And that's, I guess that's the Switch's one, is ARMS. I have no confidence in that whatsoever. It looks kind of dumb. That game probably doesn't need to exist. I may be um, dismissing it rather quickly, but I just feel like that's not something people want to see when you show off the Switch. Um, the price. I would say price is rather reasonable. I mean, $300, uh, that's, I, you have to figure they definitely weren't going to go over $300. So $300 is reasonable. 250 would have been great, but I think uh, once they've kind of showed like everything in the box, you, know, you get the actual you know switch itself, then the dock, then the two Joy Cons, the wrist straps, um, obviously the, the the cords and whatnot, and the fact that Nintendo always likes to actually turn a profit on the original hardware. Um, I I would say 250 would have been really pushing it for Nintendo to offer it at that price. So like I said, 300 is reasonable. Uh, what sucks apparently is that. Uh, 
if you were to buy any of these things separately, it's actually absurdly expensive. The Joy-Cons are like $80. Um, the dock is like 70 something, I think. It's just really absurd prices if you want to like piece them out um, after the fact. But uh, battery life, if you're going to be actually you know taking the Switch off uh, off its dock, off its TV dock, and just playing it by itself, they said two and a half to six hours. Very dependent on the title. So I'm sure a graphically intensive title, something like Skyrim, which you know was shown off Skyrim, is going to be on Nintendo Switch. I would assume that game is not going to get much time on it. Whereas if you were to play a small independent title or maybe just you know a little NES game or something like that, that's where you're going to get the longest string of your battery life. Again. That was like expectedly low, you know, like who was really kind of sitting there thinking that we were going to get like a 12 hour battery life on that thing. I know I wasn't, you're kidding yourself if you, if you were thinking you were going to get a 12 hour battery life out of it. So that's kind of, it's, it's like, you, you know, it's coming, but it still sucks to hear. Oh, well, um, uh, actually I will say one, the, the game, the one title they kind of demonstrated one, two switch. I mean, I actually think that looks very promising. What I like about that is that you can take it you know, to a party or something, and, you know, you don't need somebody else to bring a controller or something, you know, you can just use the two, um, you can just use the Joy-Cons, and it's a very social game, as Nintendo kind of showed you, um, you're not even looking at the screen and at this game, you're looking at the other person, you know, eye contact is very important in this game, that, like I said, very Nintendo, I like it, uh, and I think, actually, one two switch kind of takes me back to like uh like three sports almost and now this is a situation where very much you only need one system uh everything's included with it and this is probably going to be an experience that i think people will play and go oh man that was really cool how do i get one of those i think that's kind of what they were going for with one two switch uh the other caveat here is uh paid online so they did say obviously uh online multiplayer and uh, you know the the online service is going to be free uh, when Switch releases, and then going into the fall, there's going to be a paid service, which they didn't necessarily detail. Apparently, it comes with like one free game a month or something, but they weren't not exactly clear about that. They said like you could download download one free NES or Super NES game uh, for the month, but it, the wording kind of makes it sound like you can only play it for that month or something. Keep in mind, everything I'm saying right now may be irrelevant to this point because the event actually only ended about an hour ago for me. I record this at night, upload in the morning. Um, but uh, offering a paid online service, I mean, ugh, that's just, I think that was probably, honestly, I think that was probably the worst part of the show, honestly, because Nintendo has gotten so much shit for online for the past how many years? They still haven't figured it out. Still. It's 2017. They have not figured this shit out, and now they want to charge for it? Honestly, I, I heard that, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Um, but, you know, wait and see until we figure out what it actually is, but I will say, I mean, obviously, I think consumers are very fed up with you know monthly fees and things like that i mean there's certainly a lot of consumer fatigue there with monthly services you gotta cons you gotta figure your average consumer nowadays is paying for hulu for netflix for playstation plus uh for amazon you know maybe cable if they have cable a phone bill i mean i just i think these monthly things are really starting to hit people and to have i, I, see, I don't know i mean like i said, i i don't think it's that great um Another poor thing I will say is the presentation itself. It was awkward. Uh, there's no other way to put it. I think Nintendo really needs to do something different about how they present their um, any sort of event or when they do directs or something like that. You know, it's always just a little bit off-putting. Uh, and you know, it's a Japanese company. It's it's and it was a Japanese presentation. It was. It, it, that's what they do and that's their culture and that's totally fine uh i you know i who am i to say i'm just some guy on the internet but i would you know look at say take like look at it how sony did it back uh when you know back to say 2006 they were still very much kind of a japanese approach company back in 2006 when they really fucked up the playstation 3 uh and then you got to playstation 4 and they said hey let's just put uh you know this uh north american guy as lead architect let's start having all these presentations and everything uh is very energetic and have all these you know english people on stage and things like that and they just had a completely different attitude and they like sony kind of got westernized in a sense and i'm not saying nintendo has to do that but at the very least you have to do something with the way you do presentations because it's just i think there's a certain level of excitement that always goes into these things and if you can't really project that when you're on stage Sometimes it hurts in the long run. I think it. I think it honestly does. It, it certainly happened for Sony back then. Um, 
and for a lot of people, it happened last night with the Switch event. So, uh, you know, who am, like, yeah, who am I to say? But I think they need to definitely do something with the way they, um, you know, announce things. All in all, I would say I'm not overly optimistic. They didn't really show anything that made me want one day one. And I just said, like, I was optimistic. So I, I still believe in the actual concept and the idea of the hardware. My only problem, and I think everybody's problem with it is going to be that, um, you know, are you going to be able to convince people to buy this thing? You know, <clears throat> I'll go back to my first initial reaction to Switch, which I still kind of hold true to it here. Looks great. Name's great. Everything else seems to be fine. But as your typical consumer, your typical guy that, say, owns, a, you know, a PS4 or an X1 and buys maybe a handful of games a year, maybe this guy only buys you know, the latest Battlefield, the latest Assassin's Creed or something, maybe he'll, you know, venture into a few other games he's not um, particularly used to or something, but, you know, just games on his off, you know, on and off and, and, and things like that. You're at your typical sort of consumer. You know, is that kind of person going to be able to, is that kind of, is that person going to buy a Switch? I'm inclined to say no. And I think that's been Nintendo's problem since the GameCube. Those are just some of the news stories I want to talk about with you guys this week, and I got nothing for you. <laughs> Usually I always use this like last little bit of time to maybe update you on what's going on, but I ain't got nothing going on. Well, I will say I'm going to try and do some, extra, I'm going to do more videos down the line, but uh, you know, if you are at all a person that watches YouTube in any sort of larger capacity, you've heard every fucking YouTuber ever say that to you, which is that, hey guys, just to let you know, I'm gonna be doing more videos on the future, so keep an eye out. And that's pretty much what I'm saying here. So I won't even repeat that because I just kind of did an imitation of it, but it's really what, it's the, the same message I'm trying to convey. So just stay tuned and I'll try and do some new shit um, in 2017. You know what they say, it's 2017, new year, new me. I'm gonna try and do that too, you know what I'm saying? Got to uh, gotta keep you people on your toes. Anyway, that concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Benecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me, and I'll see you all next Friday.